Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Ann Emanuel. Thanks for joining us. Improvements are coming to the roadways in the southern tier. Our Sonia Ellison has details on Governor Hochul's announcement for the road projects and when we can expect the work to begin. So if you look right here, this, these cracks in the road, I mean, go all the way up the road and then uh, there out of town, it, the cracks are starting to get like bumpy. Governor Kathy Hochul announced the release of $100 million to pay for 66 repaving projects across New York State. The money will help fix roads impacted by extreme weather. It's mainly from in the winter time when they put the salt down and then they put the plows too close to the ground and it scrapes it all up. New York State announced that $1.6 million will be going to the area with roads in Watkins Glen, Catlin and Dick slated for repavement. That's not going to go real far, is it? Drivers agree roads are in dire need of resurfacing. I think they mainly need to do like the main roads because that's where a lot of the potholes are. But all the roads need to be completely redone. Routes 13, 34 and 96 in Tompkins County will be paved at a cost of $8 million. The further out you get into the country areas, it, it gets a little rocky. Drivers think more work should be done. Many say money is a good start if the DOT targets problem roads. If they can identify the worst areas, you know, they got to get the bridges back in good condition. The repaving is planned for spring, but some people want the work done much sooner. Get it done as quick as possible. <laughs> it's a good start for sure. It just it takes time, unfortunately, but as long as they're getting it done. As snow in the southern tier continues, drivers are looking forward to the spring paving projects and hoping their roads and cars will survive another winter. Sonia Ellison, Big Fox News, Watkins Glen. The 607 kids are collecting new or used coats, snow pants, and boots to give away for free at the Spirit of Christmas in Bath's Pulteney Park this Friday at 5 p.m. The group will be setting up early in the park on Friday for people to donate winter clothing. Donations can also be dropped off at Peacock's hometown barber shop in Bath before Friday evening. The organization is also looking for clothing racks to borrow for this event. Steuben County Sheriff's deputies hosting the Toys for Tots and Coats for Kids event this Saturday, December 2nd at Irwin and Hornell Walmart plazas. Help fill the patrol cars with toys and new or gently used winter coats from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. for Steuben County children. Toys will be given to local children in need and coats will be distributed to Steuben County school districts for children who need winter weather clothing. Corning Salvation Army seeking volunteers to ring bells and ask for red kettle donations, sort clothing and toys, help parents choose gifts at the Salvation Army toy shop, and much more. Funds raised by volunteers help provide food, clothing, and other necessities to local families all year. Those interested in volunteering can call 607-962-4681. You can text Corning Volunteer to 31333 or register online. George Santos is still refusing to resign from office. The embattled New York Republican is facing another expulsion vote tomorrow. Speaking on the floor today, Santos is staying steadfast in his refusal to resign. Are we to now assume that one is no longer innocent until proven guilty, and they are in fact guilty until proven innocent? Or are we now to simply assume that because somebody doesn't like you, they get to throw you out of your job. Santos is accused of lying about his background to get elected and using his campaign funds for personal use. Family and friends are celebrating Rosalind Carter's life in the place where it all began. Madeline Rivera has that story from Plains, Georgia. Family and friends are saying goodbye to Rosalind Carter at Maranatha Baptist Church in Plains, Georgia, a town that will be forever tied to the Carter story. A final farewell for former First Lady Rosalind Carter, who died at the age of 96. Her motorcade traveling through her hometown of Plains for a private service, ending a three-day tribute. 
Plains, Georgia is their home. It's where their family and their support group is. President Carter's mother was the nurse in the delivery room when Mrs. Carter was born. The service taking place at Maranatha Baptist Church, where the Carters worshipped. Her sons Jack and Jeff gave tributes, and the choir from our alma mater, Georgia Southwestern State University, performed. We know from family members that they've been holding hands right up to the very end, praying. Uh, President Carter wanted a moment alone with his wife so he could pray with her after she passed. The funeral comes a day after a memorial ceremony in Atlanta, attended by former President Jimmy Carter, President Biden and First Lady Jill, the Clintons and all living former First Ladies. There is an East Wing for the First Lady because Mrs. Carter made it so. She has her own work, um, not just in mental health, but her writings on the Equal Rights Amendment, um, which is a pivotal moment in our country that we're still hoping for. Um, and she's just a force to be reckoned with. Mrs. Carter's final resting place will be on the family property in Plains, Georgia, where her husband also plans to be buried. In Atlanta, Mather Rivera, Fox News. On the final day of the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas, a sixth group of hostages is expected to be released, though mediators are trying to get the deal extended. Nate Foy has more. It's the sixth day of a temporary ceasefire in Gaza. Negotiators are now working with Israel and Hamas to extend that deal for a second time. More hostages are expected to be released Wednesday, joining the more than 80 others who have been freed so far. The Biden administration is hoping Americans will be included in the next group. Secretary of State Antony Blinken travels to Israel this week to push for a longer truce. We'll be focused on making, uh, doing what we can to extend the pause so that we can continue to get more hostages out and more humanitarian assistance in. Overnight, a dozen hostages. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. The first big lake effect event across the area is coming to a close. Now, we can see those big bullseye areas. They're just outside of Lake Erie as well as outside of Lake Ontario. There some portions of Tug Hill was even reporting over 30 inches of snowfall. Both of these systems were able to bring a light dusting to the region as well. But what we'll see is that one that's going to quickly melt down. But some areas with this heavier snowfall could see some concerns as we are watching some warming that's moving in and some rain showers. Now, clearing has been able to take hold into our late evening, and we're going to continue to keep those clear skies overnight, but not too much cooling. Typically, a clear and cool sky this time of the year would allow for those temperatures to tumble. But what we have is that we have this southerly wind that's intact that's going to keep temperatures steady, only dropping down into those mid-20s. And that's going to usher in a bright as well as mild day for our last day of November. But enjoy it, because we are watching that our next system is going to move in with some increasing cloud cover even into tomorrow that's going to allow for some rain showers as we head into that Friday forecast. So again, rain showers because we're warm. So where there is some of that snowfall that could be causing for some concerns where there's more heavier snowfall. Tomorrow's sunshine is going to melt down most of the snow that is any lingering across much of our area. And then we're expected to stay active and mild at least into early next week before we'll talk about some cooling. So with an abundant blue sky, we take those temperatures quickly out of the 20s and usher those high temperatures into those 40s. Now as we get those temperatures to climb to those 40s, know that it is going to be a little blustery at times. Now, again, enjoy the day that is going to have that sunshine. There will be some increase to that cloud cover by the end of the day, and then we'll roll into our Friday forecast with showers pushing in. Friday morning even keeps a low temperature into the mid-30s, still looking fairly dry, too, for the morning. So the start of the day might not need the umbrella by the end of the day. But starting off at 35 will still allow for a higher temperatures to climb into those 40s, but we watch that overcast skies will be around to start the day off, and then rain showers will initiate. But we keep under that southerly flow that does keep those temperatures into those lower 40s. Now it is going to be blustery as that system tries to work its way in at times. So again, mentioning that tomorrow is a little breezy with that sunshine, stays a little breezy on Friday. And then as that system departs, we'll get some of our stronger wind gusts. However, the system departs, but we stay underneath southwesterly flow. We can see there Sunday and even Monday continuing to keep even a little more southeasterly flow. And what that is going to do is pull in some more moisture across the area. So first First system's going to have uh, come across the area Friday into Saturday. Saturday, we even have a high of 51. Sunday, 52. Some chances to see some sunshine there in the mix. But then we'll see that our next system that is going to be a bit more on the stronger side is going to come as we work into early next week. Continuing some shower chances in those mild temperatures. But then following that system, we could see a better push of some of those cooler temperatures.